Greetings in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm glad to be here sharing the Word of God together with you and I believe that God is going to be able to change our lives and to encourage us, bring some encouragement in our life, bring some improvement in our life, bring some changes in our life because God is in the business of changing people's life. We all know that God is a God who is interested in all of us, is interested in our life, he's interested in what is happening in your life and in my life. And we see, we are going to talk today about the life of Paul and see what happened in his life. We know that from the book of Acts chapter 9, he was on the road towards Damascus when the Spirit of the Lord or when God began to deal with him and to transform him. But now, at this time, we're going to talk from Acts chapter 26. Uh, starting from verse 1, he asked King Agrippa to be able to speak for himself in a defense to his ministry and in a defense to what he was doing. But then when we go to verse 13, this is where he gives an account and he says, At midnight, O king, I saw in a way a light from heaven above, the bright, above the brightness of the sun, shining right about me and them which were journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of those things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear to you about, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I will send you to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. We see here Paul beginning to defend his ministry, defend what has happened in his life, he is able to, ex, uh, to explain to King Agrippa as to what happened. He says, first of all, God said to him, he must be ready for him to can talk to him. We all know that when God calls us, he calls us at one time, but persistently God will come to us and reveal certain things. This is what he says here. He says, I have appeared for you to you for this reason. And he says the reason later on. And he says, even for the things that I'm still going to appear to you about, we know that all of us must learn to follow God, just like Abraham followed God. God called him and he said, I'm calling you into a city that I will show you. So Abraham and he started on his journey. He did not know where he was going, but he had to trust God that God was able to lend him to the city that he has called him to. So it means God revealed himself to Abraham at that time, but God was saying to him, I will still reveal myself to you and show you where you are to go. We know that the Christian life is a journey. We know that growth itself is a journey. We know that ministry is a journey. We know schooling is a journey. Everything about our life is a journey. So we start from somewhere and we go somewhere else. And as we go along, we have to learn and in stages as to where we are going. So he says, God appeared to him and he says, rise up and stand upon your feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. There is a purpose for your life. There is a purpose for anybody's life. All of us, we are not just people who are filling space here on earth, but we are here for a purpose of God and for the calling of God. He says to make you a minister and a witness of those things which I have which you have seen and of those things that I will yet appear to you about. 
Now he began to say, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you. This is very important because all of us who are here on earth on a mission from God, we must be delivered from the people because people can manipulate us. People can control us. People can demand certain things of us. People can even purchase our gift. People can even prostitute our gift. We must be delivered from the people in order for us to can be able to fulfill our calling and our mission and our ministry. Our mandate is is a mandate from God and not from people. Therefore, we need to be delivered from the people. When you are delivered from the people, it means you will be able to fulfill your goal, to fulfill your mission, to fulfill your mandate without being distracted by the people. We all know that people sometimes, even at church, when you preach, they say you are talking about them. They are trying to stifle whatever you have to say. Some people will say to you, I can hear that you are talking about my situation and you are gossiping about my situation and so forth. Those things can be able to distract you if you are not careful. So God says he wants to deliver us from the people that he is sending us into. Number one, he says in verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, meaning Jesus Christ. Now, Paul is a actually explaining to us the mission for all of us. Number one, he says, to open the eyes of the people. Now, all of us, we know that it is not just people who are seeing, who are visually uh, advantaged, who can be able to see, but even the people who are blind, they can be able to see. When he says to them, I want to open your eyes, it means there are some people whose eyes are open, but they cannot see. Jesus Christ even said it. He said, these people, quoting Isaiah, it says in, in, in chapter 13 of Matthew, verse 15, he says, these people, their eyes, they have shut so that they cannot see the things of God. There are many people who cannot see what God is doing in their life. There are many people who cannot see what God intends for their life. There are many people who are blind to the mission of God. There are many people who are blind to the things of God. God even spoke, Jesus Christ spoke to Nicodemus in chapter 3 of, of uh, verse 3 of chapter 3 in John. He says to him, uh, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. And he uses the word see. He doesn't say enter. He says see because all of us must be able to see the mission of God concerning our life. We have to, we have to see the kingdom of God, all of us at some time. But for us to see the kingdom of God or the things of God, we have to have our eyes open. We know even Elijah, he had his seven. And when his seven began to see the, the Syrian army, he was shocked and he was amazed and he was afraid. He fear gripped his heart when he looked at them. And mad. But the man of God said to him, you know, there are more with us than with them. And when he began to look, he saw that there was a, 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 a legion of armies around them. People were on horseback, people who were ready to do battle. And when he looked, he saw that uh, it's me and you. And then you said to me, there are more with us than with them. How can it be? But then the Bible says, he prayed for Gehazi and he laid hands on him and said, God, open his eyes. When his eyes were open, he began to see the angels of God. He began to see the armies of God. He began to see into the spirit. He began to see into another world that we are not familiar with. He began to see that there were angels of God who are standing there as the armies of God ready to do battle. 
We must learn to have our eyes opened by God in order for us to know God better. We must understand God better, but God can only be understood by people who have a vision, who have a seeing power, uh, people who are able to see through the ages, people who are able to see through the trouble, people who are able to see through all the rubble that is in front of them. God wants us to have an x-ray vision about our life. God wants us to have an x-ray vision about the things that we are faced with in life. And he says, yeah, I am sending you, Paul, to go and open their eyes. I wonder how many people have their eyes open to the things of God. I wonder how many people have their eyes open to their own life, you know, People who kill themselves are people who have not seen what God is about to do with them. People who are depressed are people who do not know what God is about to do in their life. People who go to a point of being useless by using all sorts of substance and things. There are people who have not seen what God wants to do with their life. I'm trying to say to you, there are greater things that God is about to do in your life, but you have to have your eyes open to those things that God wants to do. When we look at the life of Abraham, God begins to say to him, Abraham, open your eyes and see. He says, open your eyes and see the land that I have given to you. He says, I have given you the land in the east, in the west, in the south, and in the north. He says, all of that I have given to you, but you will get as far as as your eyes can see you can read that in genesis chapter 13 as far as your eyes can see now the issue is if he is short-sighted it is his problem if he is far-sighted it is his own problem but God says, as far as you can see, that have I given unto you. God is a God who works with open eyes on the people of God. He works with open visions to the people of God. God always wants you to see what you are about to enter into. He says, I am sending you, therefore, Paul, to go and open the eyes of the people. Many people's eyes are not open to the things of God. Many people that are groping in darkness. Many people are walking in darkness. Many people are living in darkness, utter darkness, as to what God intends for their life. But God wants your eyes to be open so that you can understand Him. God wants your eyes to be open so that you can understand yourself. There are some people who have ultimately change themselves into what they, are, they themselves cannot understand. You see a man he says, I am a man trapped in a woman's body. Or you see a woman, he says, I am a woman, I am a man trapped in a woman's body. People don't understand themselves. People don't see themselves. People have not seen what God wants to do in and through their life. Therefore, God says, I want you to open their eyes. Remember, you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. The first thing that makes us to be born again the first thing that makes our eyes to be open is to have us connect with God. Many people have forgotten about God. Ah, there's a scripture that I shudder sometimes when I read it. In the book of Psalms chapter 9 verse 17, it says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the people were forgotten about God. There are some people whose eyes were open at some time, but now they have forgotten all about God. They have left God. They have gone away from God. They have gone astray from God. They have gone into utter darkness. And God says these people's eyes must be open too. Even with you, God wants to open your eyes. But the first way to open your eyes is to get you saved and to get you born again. We have to understand that without the saving power 
of the Almighty God, our eyes cannot be open into our future and into our life. Our eyes cannot be open to the with God intent for us unless we are born again. We are born anew. We are born in our spirit. Your spirit doesn't need to be in darkness of sin, in darkness of wickedness, in darkness of evil. Your spirit must be saved from that darkness. And that darkness can be taken away by the light, which is called Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, those who come to me will never walk in darkness, will never live in darkness. Jesus Christ was showing us again that he is the revelator, that he is the light. David says, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. So we know that the salvation of God is the one that brings light unto us, that opens our eyes into the things of God. Hallelujah. We must understand that God's intention for us is to have eyes that will be able to see the goodness of God. Many people don't see the goodness of God. Many people don't see where God wants to lead them. Many people don't see the things that God intended for their life. Many people don't see, and many people who do that are people who get depressed and they end up killing themselves. So he says, I'm sending you, Paul, to go and open their eyes. Here's another thing that Jesus Christ had a problem with. It was with the Pharisees because they claimed to know the law. They claimed to have an open view of what God wants. They claimed to have a revelation of who God is and what God does. But Jesus Christ said to them that they are blind who are leading the blind. It means their eyes were not open. It means their eyes were, deaf, were, were blind to the will of God. It means their eyes were blind to what God has intended for them. And that's why Jesus Christ ultimately said to them that they have the key. They have the key for the kingdom of God. But they themselves cannot enter. Neither do they allow other people to enter because their eyes were darkened. Their eyes were darkened by sin. Their eyes were darkened by all the things that they were doing, which were not right. They purported themselves to be people of power and yet they had none. So God says to Paul, Paul, I want you to go and open the eyes of the people. Also, this can be physical. Jesus Christ in his ministry, he has opened the eyes of the blind. And God wants to open their, your eyes because God created those eyes to can be able to see. Jesus Christ opened eyes of the blind in many ways. He found another man who was blind and he came and he said to him, uh, Go and wash your eyes, wash yourself at the pool of, 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 of Siron. And as he went and he washed his eyes, his eyes were open. How can Jesus Christ put that mud on his eyes? It is because Jesus Christ is a creator. He can be able to change things. Hallelujah. And one other thing, he saw another man who was blind and Jesus casted out a demon of blindness from that person. And that person was able to see. The other one, Jesus Christ laid his hands on them. And when he laid his hand, that person began to say, I see men like trees walking. And Jesus laid hands again because Jesus Christ wanted him to have a perfect eyesight. He prayed for him again and that person has his eyes open. Jesus Christ is in the business of opening the eyes of the blind. If your eyes cannot see, I'm believing God together with you that your eyes will be able to be open in the name of Jesus. God is a God who wants us to have eyes that are open to his will, eyes that are open to his ways, eyes that are open to his truth, eyes that are open to that which he intended for us in our life. I remember when I was still in the world doing all sorts of things, I realized that I was groping in darkness. I was walking in darkness. My eyes were not open to what God wanted to do in my life. I did not know that God wanted to use me and to use me in his ministry. I did not know that God had a purpose for my life. I did not know that God had a plan for my life. But when I came to Jesus, my eyes were 
will open to the fact that God has called me. God wants to use me in opening the eyes of other people. God wants to use me in reaching the lives of the people. God wanted to use me in turning around the lives of the people. My eyes were open when Jesus came into my life. Remember Jesus Christ, in him there is no darkness at all. In him there is light. In him there is openness of vision. In him there is a power for us to can be able to see what God intends for our life. I wish for you, you can be able to see what God is intending for your life. May your eyes be open to the will of God. May your eyes be open to the love of God. May your eyes be open to the goodness of God. May even during this time of the coronavirus, may our eyes be open to what God intends for our life. Remember, we shall not die, but we shall live to declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our eyes need to be open so that we can be able to follow. Jesus Christ said, Come, follow me, and I will make you the fishers of men. Our eyes have got to be open in order to follow Jesus Christ. Walking in the steps of Jesus Christ, walking in the glory of Jesus Christ, walking in the power of Jesus Christ will only happen once our eyes are open. Jesus Christ is the revelator. Jesus Christ is the one who opens the eyes of the blind, who open our eyes into that which we are supposed to enter into. You see, we must understand that groping in darkness is not the calling of God for our life. We must understand that groping in darkness is not what God intended for us. God wants us to see the light. Hallelujah. We must see the light. Jesus Christ himself, when he was eight days old, they took him to the temple. I like what happened there. Bible says, Simeon came in and he says, today, today I have seen the salvation. It means when he saw Jesus Christ, he saw his, he had his eyes open to that which God has intended for his life. When he saw the baby Jesus, he began to praise God and he says, now your servant God can depart in peace because I have seen the consolation of Israel. It means his eyes were open when he saw Jesus. His eyes were open to his future when he saw Jesus. Jesus brings light to our eyes for that we can be able to see what God has intended for us. And then he began to prophesy. He said this Jesus Christ was going to be the light to the world. He was going to be the light to Israel. He was going to be a light to the Gentiles. He began to prophesy. He began to speak something that all other people could not see. He said Jesus Christ was going to be the light to the Gentiles. And we know that there was no light, there was darkness among the Gentiles. But Jesus Christ, when he was seen by Simeon, Simeon says, now I see. Now my eyes are open to this light of the world, to this light of the gospel. Hallelujah. May we understand that God wants our eyes to be open. May we understand that God wants us to be unveiled into the vision of God. May we understand that God has got a plan for us to see the goodness of God and the greatness of God and the power of God. The children of Israel, when they went with Moses to the Red Sea, when Moses stretched out the rod, it parted the ocean, and they walk in the dry ground. It means they began to see the glory of God. They began to see what God can do. I'm reminded again of the life of 
uh, Lazarus when he was dead. Uh, Jesus Christ came to the sisters, Mary and Martha, and he said to them in the book of John chapter 11 verse 40, when you believe, you will see the glory of God. Your believing in God will open your eyes to the greatness of God, to who God is and to what God does and to those things that God has intended for our life. He says, when you believe, you will see the glory of God. May we believe that we may see that which God has intended for our our life. May we believe and have our eyes open to the glory of God, to the vision of God, to the plan of God, to the mandate that God has for each and every one of us. And may God richly bless us. It will be a great thing for us to come closer to Jesus, receiving Jesus Christ, just like Simeon, when he saw Jesus Christ, his eyes were open. Just like all the other people who believed in Jesus Christ and he prayed for them and their eyes were opened. Just like Bartimaeus who was at the street corner, Jesus Christ said to him, what do you want me to do for you? He says, Lord, that my sight may be open. He said, be it unto you according to your will. And his eyes were open. May our eyes be open today. May we receive Jesus Christ and as we receive him, he will open our eyes and God richly bless you in Jesus name. Amen.